Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. And as much as I like talking about food, it's time to talk about motocross. And the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championships are here this weekend. Thrilled to have Landon Powell here in our studio with us. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you here. You're a local racer, a South Jordan boy. I am, yeah. From here in Utah. I've been here my whole life. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to have a local race here, uh, you know, at home. Yeah, indeed. We're expecting big things out of you, my friend. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, understand, uh, yeah, you, we've got uh, you and a couple of the boys from Lehigh yep. uh, be competing as well. Yep. So uh, Lehigh is always well represented in these things for some reason. What's that about? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of good riders that come out of Lehigh. I'm not sure what that is. I'm actually going to be a Lehigh resident soon, which is funny. I actually just yeah. bought a house there. So What is that? I don't it's know. It's because there's so much area out there to put a dirt track. Yeah, something. it's got to be it, right. definitely. <laughs> anyway, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to have of, uh, somebody that we can root for and you pick you know I like Landon so I'm gonna root for him <laughs> so you could pick one of the Lehigh boys uh, if you wanted to uh, and, and root for them but uh, it's gonna be a great race it's this weekend out at Miller yep. Motor Sports Park talk to me about the course out there uh, it's awesome I mean it's right in the middle of the road course out there at Miller Motor Sports Park which is really cool uh, they've done so much work out there brought in so much dirt and uh, they've really made it one of the you know a top motocross track out of basically nothing that was out there in the flats yeah, of Twila. Flat. Yeah, so for what they've done is pretty incredible and uh, the track is awesome and yeah, it's always really intense and great racing. Indeed. Uh, what's your favorite part? What, what do you love most about motocross racing? Uh, it's got to be the adrenaline. You yeah. know, it's one of those things that I started young and I, you know, the adrenaline kind of takes over and it just becomes an addiction and it's just one of those things where uh, you get that rush and it's hard to, to do anything that's not, that doesn't have the high intensity and rush when, after doing When you that. say started young, you're talking single digits. Yeah, four years old. Serious? Yeah. That's your first time on a bike. That's right. At four years old, I uh, rode a bicycle without training wheels when I was like two and a half. And uh, yeah, three years old, you know, Parents got, like, got good on the bicycle and it was, it was time, you know, the bicycle wasn't enough anymore. I needed a motor. Uh, you know, I don't know how you, you, you know, your parents are much more daring, is all I can say here. Uh, we're seeing a little bit uh, of the action that you've been involved in here in the last little bit as well. Uh, pretty crazy stuff, the motocross. I mean, there's always some excitement, some crashes you see here. Uh, it's. It, it's fun it's fun watching isn't it yeah absolutely it's definitely entertainment you know and it's and the risk that these guys are taking you know that people don't really understand I mean these are 220 pound motorcycles and we're racing at high speed side by side there's 40 yeah. of us on the track at once um, hitting wow. jumps up to 80 feet and it's yeah it's pretty intense do you like the airtime are you a big fan of that yeah absolutely airtime is awesome so is speed or airtime what's what's the better do you like to fly or do you like to go fast which is it uh both you know you have to go fast into the jumps to get the airtime so okay. it's definitely a good mixture of both all right i can i can feel that i, I can understand how that would be <laughs> uh, a pretty big uh part of wh wh why you love to do this the competitive nature though is a big uh, a big draw as well Yep. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's one of these guys going for it. Yep. And it's one of those things where it's not a team sport. So you're out there for yourself. And that right. uh, definitely intensifies the competitiveness, you know, because it's all on you, really. Um, you get your bike ready and you get to the races and you have a team that helps you get there. But once the gate drops, it's it's all on you. So the competitiveness definitely comes out. Now, th when we talk about this, a 220 pound bike, uh, a lot of bumps, uh, as you can see there. Yeah. Uh, some speed to go with it, landings, yeah. takeoff things. You're you're really it's a physical workout. Yeah, absolutely, and that's another thing people don't realize. Yeah. Is it's one of the most physically demanding sports there is. Right. Um, yeah, to throw that bike around and to have the tracks get rough and bumps and to be able to control it. And the races are 30 minutes plus two laps, so it's basically an, an all-out sprint for for 30 minutes, and it's wow. it's intense, absolutely. Yeah, 30 minutes of real hard work. Yep. When, one of the things I want to talk about because I don't think everybody understands how the motocross bike works mm -hmm. uh, or any any bike getting in the air or cars for that matter there's some tricks to keeping level to, to coming down the right way uh, talk to me about that so part of it has to do with the spin of the wheels yeah yeah definitely yeah. and there's you know I mean it takes years and years to perfect the techniques to ride a dirt bike and that's why there's only very few guys that ever make it to the top level because it is such a difficult sport to, there's a lot to, going on. Exactly. There is a lot. You know, you got the clutch, the shifter, the rear brake, the front brake. Uh, you know, I mean, the suspension setup has to be just right. And there's just so much that goes into it. Your technique, you know, one inch, you could be sitting one inch 
too far back on the seat or one inch too far forward and it'll totally throw it off the weight and all your right. balance and everything like that. So the spin of the wheel, you're, you're braking uh, the front wheel sometimes to come down, is that right? Yep, is that yep. Right? so if your front wheel gets high in the air, you tap your rear brake, right. it'll stop, stop your rear brake, brake yep, yep, and lower the front end. Okay. And um, yeah, it's, there's definitely, I mean, it's hard That's for me to crazy. even think, you know, everything's become so natural now that I don't even think about that stuff. But yeah, there is, it's crazy everything that goes into it. Wow, it's exciting, there's no doubt. Uh, the race is on Saturday. Yep, yep, this Saturday. Who's your big competitor? Who's, who's the person to beat? Oh man, everybody. I've actually been injured most of the year, um, yeah. so I haven't, I haven't really been in the series most of the year. And, uh, but yeah, everybody out there, I mean, there's no, there's not one person on the track that's not a, not a top rider. So anybody could win. Anybody could win. Yeah, you get a good start oh and uh, hang in there. What's that like going for that whole shot, trying to get that first turn in, getting there first? That's kind of the big thing, right? Yeah, it's critical because I mean, you have 40 of, like I said, 40 of the best guys in the world, and if you start in 40th, it's a, that's a lot of guys to pass to get to right. the front. But if you start in the front, you know, it's a little easier to maybe slide back, let a few guys in front of you, you know, maybe end up top 10. So. Uh, yeah, the start is absolutely critical, and it's uh, a lot of people say it's 80% of the race. Now, the, one of the differences too, this is outdoors. Yep. So hot uh, yep. is another part of this too. The heat that that does affect you guys in 30 minutes of racing. Right? Yeah, especially because all our gear, you know, we have helmets, yeah. goggles, knee pads, under uh, gear. I mean, we're we're loaded down, and uh, the heat definitely plays into the and the motors are hot. You know, you feel all that right. heat off the bikes, and yeah. Indeed. All right. So uh, for a moment, uh, let's talk to the kids out there because there's I know there's a few kids that are looking to you and, and uh, hoping to be like you. They idolize you. They yeah. want it, They want to do this, right? <laughs> yeah. What's the process? What What do you tell a, a young a young fellow, a young girl out there who wants to be a motocross uh, rider? Um, commitment. Obviously, you know you have to be fully committed to this and have fun. Uh, you know, there's a lot of kids that get into the sport and they kind of you know take it get. It gets a little too serious, and then the fun goes out of it, yeah. and then you got to keep it fun. Yeah, you got to keep it fun. You got to make sure that you know you don't uh, you don't overdo it, and um, yeah, just know that you pretty much have a goal in your mind, and don't stop till you get there. There you go. That's uh, and that's working for it. Yep. Talk to me about the injury. What happened, and uh, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling good. Um, I had a big injury at the beginning of the season, broke some ribs, like four yeah. actually, yeah, and that was those take forever. Anybody that's broke ribs knows they take a long time to heal. And uh, so those healed. I came back and was coming back for the Houston Supercross and actually crashed again oh, uh, the first practice and rebroke all my ribs, broke my hand and my collarbone. Different kind of crash? A different kind of crash, okay. same injuries, plus more. <laughs> so oh, boy. It was rough. So How yeah, many I actually. Bones have you broken, by the way? I don't even know. Countless. <laughs> wow. Quite a few, yep. Is, it, is that scary? Do you think about that when you're out there? No, I mean, I feel like now that I'm starting to get a little bit older, I'm starting to think about it more than I ever have. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's part of the sport. And, you know, if you're doing this, you know that it's uh, it's part of the territory and it's going to happen. It's not if, it's when. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we kind of take it like that. And, you know, you can get hurt doing anything, so I'd rather it be on a motorcycle. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, we'd rather you win on a motorcycle. How about that? Yeah, We're going to come out good. and uh, cheer you on. What's the dates and times? So it'll be this Saturday. Um, practice starts around 8 a.m. Okay. And the races will start around 1 o'clock. And we'll go till probably 4 or 5 o'clock. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be super intense. Three, Definitely. Four can, hours of excitement. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and you can go to millermotorsportspark.com. Uh, to get tickets or come out to the box office and uh, get them on site. Yeah, inexpensive tickets are not bad at all. Yep, no, $40 uh, uh, for family. the day. Yeah, yep. activity. Yep. All right, well, I hope you do well. Thank and, you. And uh, wishing you less injuries. How about that? I appreciate Stay healthy, it. okay? Thank you. All right, Landon Powell, thanks so much for being here. Miller thanks Motorsports Park is the site of the Lucas uh, Motocross cha uh, Championship this weekend on Saturday. We'll be back with more right here on the Mountain Morning Show. We're going to be in the kitchen. I think maybe we'll keep uh, Landon here to test a little food. How about that? Sounds good. We are back in the kitchen. Meal is done and ready. So tell me a little bit, what are we going to eat, Mary? So this is our green curry with chicken on noodles. Um, Misan and her sister have made it for us, so we can jump into the taste test. Yeah. And I think we have one more to serve here. Go ahead. Yeah, we brought uh, Landon Powell back onto our set <laughs> as a celebrity taste tester with us this, uh, this morning. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing wrong with eating uh, this for breakfast, right? No, it's it's smelled, okay. It smells so good, man. I had to stick around. <laughs> Motocross guys, you guys can eat it. You have iron stuff. You can eat anything for breakfast, exactly. right? Exactly. Thank you so, very much. Give this a try. Well, this looks wonderful. Uh, my stomach has been growling all morning. Yes, I, I know. Like, I've been smelling this. 
I'll just make sure and blow on it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about what is in this. So there's long green beans, which I'd actually never <laughs> seen before I was at the CLC. They're about this long. They oh just look goodness. like normal green beans, but that's what you're eating there. Chicken, carrots, um, cilantro, peppers, lots of coconut milk, green curry, and some bean sprouts. And a little bit of lime to that garnish. That coconut yeah. milk and curry <laughs> yeah, is off the charts. Wow. Mm. Really yummy. This is amazing. It has just the right Excellent. amount of spice, too. Yeah. I can't wait to save this for lunch. Well, we got to talk about the book, uh, Mary McIntyre's book. Uh, it's called Savor. Where can we find it? So it's for sale at the King's English and also on our website, which is saverbook.com. And all the proceeds from the book are actually going back to the community. So it's, I think it's 25 bucks for a book. And when they built the community learning center where we did the cooking, they actually um, built it where they used to have a community garden. So our idea with the proceeds from the book is to build another community garden so that there's wow. a garden and a kitchen right next to each other. And a lot of the people in our book talked about how they grew a lot of their food in their home countries. So if they had the space and the ability to do it here, I'm sure most of them would be really excited to do that. Oh, I so bet. That's wonderful. I'm really excited because there's like five recipes for plantains. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the plantain. Yeah. Good. I got, we got plantainus maduris in here. We got the plantainus uh, fritos. I'm all about this. Anything this is really ridiculous. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never I, really I like eaten them like them before. They're so good. I like them like potato chips, but hey, I'll do this too. This is all great. Yeah. There might be like five planting recipes here. Yeah. So it's actually <laughs> the books in three different chapters. So one of them cilantro, one of them's noodles, and one of them is the plantain or banana plant. So there's five recipes for each, and we just chose ingredients that are used cross culturally a lot. So that's how we broke it down. So there wow. are indeed that's five great. plantain recipes. I'm taking this one home with me. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, we get to thank you so very much for being here today. This yeah, has just been tremendous. Guys. And getting a chance to spend a little time uh, absorbing a little more culture, especially the food part of it, is always is always uh, a pleasure. So thank you, ladies, so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, absolutely. I want to thank our friend Landon Fowler for hanging out as well. Don't miss the race out at Miller Motorsports Park this weekend. It's going to be incredible. Uh, if you like get a little dirt on you, you maybe. You spray a little? No, plenty. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of, of dirt fun. out there.